Hello everyone, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 83rd Masteroid, the Full Armor Unicorn Gundam version Ka. This is the last Master Grade from 2011 and the last contender for 2011 Master Grade Kit of the Year. This is from the OVA slash novel Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn, and this kit is a beast. Let's have a look. Now when you first get the box, you're going to open it up and you're going to look into the box and you're going to see it's essentially the bottomless pit. This thing has tons and tons and tons of plates, and it will overwhelm you when you first look at it. When you finally do find the manual at the bottom of this thing, you're going to notice just how thick it is. There's tons of stuff in this manual. Open it up, you got pictures of the kit. Then you got a plate guide. Tons of plates. Then you got assembly instructions, as usual. Then you got transformations instructions. Then you got assembly instructions on the weapons and all the accessories. And then you go to the end, and you got three pages of decals. I'm going to go ahead and say it now. This has more decals, more dry transfer and sticker decals, than any Master Grade ever made, period. They are just here by the ton. And it has one of the biggest sticker and decal sheets I've ever seen. Now, what I did to this kit was the same thing I did with Sinanju. Build a piece, do the decals. In this case, I build the torso, do all the decals. Because if you wait till the end on this kit to do all the decals, you'll lose your mind. Now, a little comparison here on the left here is the full armor unicorn. Again, decals all over this thing. And on the right is the original unicorn Verka. Again, you can see some, some differences in terms of decals. I will say the decals are a little bit better cut on this one. In terms of body style, for the most part the same, but when you get down to the legs, you will see some differences. The legs have been reshaped and remolded a little bit. Gives a little bit bend out of the knees and a little bit stronger connection as well. Again, elbows good, shoulders good, waist is all right. The ankles, however, are still super loose, wobbly as they were before. Fortunately, no change there. But that ankle has more joints in it than most Gundams do in an ankle. Now, the decals on this kit, I will say, are a lot easier to work with. On the Unicorn itself, it's mostly sticker decals. There are a few dry transfer. But these are cut a lot better. I found that on the original Unicorn Verka, they were cut kind of big and got in the way sometimes. They did a better job of cutting all the decals on this particular kit. So, as many decals as they are, they are a little bit easier than last time. Now, as for the transformation to destroy mode, first off, you may notice that the psycho frame kind of has a blue tinge to it. That just has to do with the spotlight I'm putting on it. In the same way Unicorn Verka kind of had a pink tinge when you put a nice big light on it, this one kind of has a bit of a blue tinge, but it's a lot more solid green without the spotlight. Now, for the shake test, do you see nothing really falling off? Back on the Unicorn Verka, if I did that, all sorts of crazy stuff would be flying off. But on this kit, it's a lot more solid. And one thing in particular, on the Unicorn Verka, that little section on the knee would pop off all the time. That doesn't happen here. Much better connection. No real big problems. The horn, you got to either get a split horn or a solid horn, but they are all white. They give you some stickers to make it yellow, but I went ahead and painted it gold. Now for the accessories. Yeah. First, you get two beam magnums. This is pretty much the exact same magnum you got with the Unicorn Verka, so in fact you get two of them, and there are no extra ammo clips this time. Holding them, no problem. Hold it at full extension, both of them at the same time, no issues whatsoever. Next, you get these eight packs of hand grenades. You can remove the hand grenades, but all three are linked together, so you're probably not going to be doing that that much. So what do you do with these? Four of them you will connect onto the legs, two on each side. They will connect here, these hooks on each side, that's what those were there for, and no real problems hooking them in, nice and solid. The other four you are going to hook on to these bazookas. These bazookas are very similar but not identical to the Unicorn Verka bazookas. There, you can see a little bit of different barrel on there. Again, decals all over the bloody things. Now to that you're going to attach this. The little grenade launcher has two clips. One is visible, one is already hooked into the gun. You're also going to connect this, a, a missile launcher. You're also going to connect the hand grenades. All of that is going on the bazooka. Now, holding the bazooka as is, no problem whatsoever. Full extension, nice connection onto the hand, and a nice brace onto the shoulder, no problem at all. 
But if you put all this junk onto it, it does get kind of front heavy. You can't have that barrel at full extension. Uh, what do I mean by full extension? Well, you can see the bazooka has a collapsible barrel there. That full that barrel at full extension is just too front heavy, but if you collapse it, you can put all that junk on it, no problem. You also get three shields. Again, you can kind of get the sense of a blue tinge here. That just has to do with the lighting I'm using, but it's more green when you see it in person. Unless you have a spotlight on it when you display it, but anyway. Again, decals all over the bloody thing. Now, there is one shield that is a little bit different. It has a slightly different attachment on the back, and it has a fr different decal on the front. One different decal. But other than that, these are identical. You'll see why one is different shortly. You also get six beam Gatling guns. These Gatling guns did not come with the original Unicorn Verka, or the OVA version, and a lot of people complained about it. Now you got six in this one, so there you go. You see, the scope there was not painted. There is no stickers. I went ahead and repainted them in a gr in green, silver with a top coat of clear green, just to match everything. Again, decals all over the bloody thing. You also get this, a hyper beam javelin, or if you prefer, beam halberton. There is a little bit of psycho frame on this thing. Now, you can, un you can have it folded up like this, but you can unfold it as so. Take off the handle. Reattach it in the center. You're going to bring the bottom part here with a little triangle up to the top. Reattach the handle into the center, and then it can hold it with no problem, and you have beam effect parts to hook on there as well. No real problem holding this. Nice strong attachment. Arm is plenty strong enough to hold it up. And there is a place for a two-hand if you want to two-handed wield it, but you don't have to. And of course, you get two of those. You can also take the triangle part and attach it to the beam magnum, and you can kind of have it as a bayonet on the front, a beam bayonet, which is kind of neat. And of course you can do that to both long rifles, I mean beam magnums rather. Again the beam halberton, you can fold up into this section here. This is a kind of a tricky, it doesn't want to line up perfectly. Again, decals all over this bloody thing. Uh, there is nothing on this kit that does not have decals on it. Now, the base jaber. This was a little confusion when it first came out. Does this come with the kit, or is it a separate release? Nope, it's all in here. Uh, everything you need to make the base jaber. Propellant tanks, whole nine yards. Again, decals all over the crazy thing. You will notice there is no clear part on the cockpit. Just, you know, wire framing on the outside. But the guy's inside is in a space suit, so I guess he's all right. Be an interesting ride, though. You can have the Unicorn ride this thing as a sled, and yes, I am cheating, this is the original Verka, but it'll still ride it. Nice attachment for the knees and for the feet. Truthfully, you could put just about any Gundam you want on this thing if you want to, except this is markings all over it, it says Nihil Argama, so it wouldn't really fit, but whatever. Now, to use the propellant tanks on the Gundam itself, you pretty much have to disassemble the base chamber. Take these parts off, re- uh, take off the front of the propellant tank and reattach. And you got to take off the engines and reattach those too. It's not the easiest to disassembly. I thought it'd be just a little pop and unplug, but not really. And you can keep the base japer to the side and display it if you want, because it's kind of big to set aside. Of course, we can't forget about the beam saber blades, four beam saber blades, but you do get them. You also get this attachment for the backpack, and yes, even this thing has decals on it. Now to use this thing, you're going to take off the backpack. And there's a little hook in the back of the backpack to hook into here. You're also going to put on these beam Gatling guns, and you're going to hook them into this section. There's a little piece at the bottom that locks it into place so it's never coming off. You're going to slide the backpack in there and hook it all together. It's going to snap shut, and you're good. You also have this attachment at the bottom. Now, you cannot put on the backpack with this on here. This is for an action base. But I highly advise you put it on there. I'll talk to you boy in a bit. It is a gigantic pain in the butt to get it on there once the backpack is already on, but that's the only way you can get it on. It's frustrating, it's aggravating, but trust me, you want to do it in the long run. And again, 
looks pretty badass with the beam gatling guns on the backpack. Next you're going to add the other four beam gatling guns on each arm. This hooks right into the arm itself. No real weight issues. No problems yet. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the attachment off the shield and hook it into the beam javelin. You're going to then hook this into the shield as so. So you're going to have the shield and the beam javelin hooked together. From there you're going to take that attachment and hook it onto the beam gatling guns. So essentially what you've made is a giant Gundam s weapon sandwich. The bottom is the gatling guns, then the beam javelin, then the shield on top of that. Hooks one into the other into the other. And it actually hooks on pretty darn good. I was afraid it'd be kind of loose and fall off. No, it doesn't have that problem. And the arm is plenty strong enough to hold it up. But you can see, now we're getting into some severe balance issues. Next, you can see you can flip the javelin around so you can have the beam effects parts kind of coming out of the shield. That's kind of neat. And you're going to have this little attachment at the back. You see, also, here's where that other shield comes in. It cannot be transformed on the back, though. Next, bazooka. Remember this little clip on the bazooka that never made sense? Here's why it's here. See the far left side of the screen? There's a little section you're going to hook it into, and it's going to lock in place. And there you go. And you can see now he's exceedingly back heavy. I can't even take my hand off him. There's just no way he's going to stand. You can lean him up against a wall, maybe, but even that's kind of tricky. Next, you attach propellant tanks. And they give you these little uh, attachments to hold the thing up. I'm going to go ahead and say it. These things suck. They don't really work. Getting this thing to stand, even with those things, is virtually impossible. It's the most back-heavy kit I've ever seen. Not surprising with all this stuff on it. But those attachments really don't help that much. So, how do you get this thing vertical? Well, back to our old friend, the action base. The action base attachment in this is actually pretty good. Like I said, getting it in there is a pain in the butt. But once you got it in, you're good. Then you're going to attach that onto an action base, and you're going to get them airborne. You see, I got them also holding the beam magnums, got everything straightened out in its right position, and you can get a sense of just how incredibly massive this thing is. See the attachment there underneath the backpack? They do give you an attachment for the crotch, just like the standard unicorn Verka, but trust me, make yourself your life a little easier and use the backpack one. For a little size comparison, there you see Unicorn Verka in Unicorn mode. You can see this thing is tall, but it's just so, you know, big and wide and insane. Next to the original RX-78-2, he's got that little gun, Unicorn. He's got tons of weapons on that thing. It's almost laughable when you put it next to other kits. Final thoughts on this kit. This kit is not for everyone. This is what I like to call a collector's kit. Certain, you know, casual Master Grade or Gundam fans or Gunpla fans in general really don't need to buy this kit. So your big, heavy-time collectors are going to want this thing. You can do all sorts of stuff with this kit. You can do all sorts of neat and crazy things with this kit. And you can hold pretty much every weapon they give you, which is I didn't expect they would be able to do. It's a fun and crazy kit, but it's not for everyone. But I'm still giving this kit a thumbs up. This is still a great addition to any collection if you want to tackle it. Well, gang, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it informative. If you got any questions, please ask it, and I will answer it to the best of my ability. You should be seeing some more reviews from me very shortly. We do have the issue of to discuss of Master Grade Kit of the Year for 2011, since this was the last one. So, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. That just ain't fair.